Since I started testing batteries, I have gotten a lot of questions about how do you do it? How are you making these graphs? What is the step-by-step -step process? And what I have set up now, it did took me quite a while of sorting through stuff, trying to figure out, you know, what would be good for my purposes. So today's video, I have some batteries here that I wanted to test. So I figured I would um, just detail step-by-step -step from the very beginning to the actual exported graph, um, kind of walk through what I do. If you are wanting to do this, I will link everything you need in the comments below. I have, um, have some Amazon affiliate links that will you know, take you right to the stuff you need. So first, you're going to need the batteries that you want to test. Um, I have some batteries that I've been looking at and want to see what they do at 130 amps today, so that's the test I'm going to do. Other than the batteries, you're going to need large gauge wire. Um, the reason I say this is because if you're using small wire, you are going to be causing voltage drop that when you measure it, it's going to make the batteries look like they're performing worse than they are. So I'm using 2-0 and 4-0. Um, you're going to need, uh, well I use this, it is a, it's a desktop variable power supply it, to charge up my batteries. You don't need this for these tests, but I mean you're going to need a way to recharge your batteries. Um, the star of the show, however, is this Bluetooth shunt, which I will link to below. It comes with a graphical screen, and you're also going to need an iOS or Bluetooth or iOS or Android device that will let you run the app and export the actual data we're going to get. Um, I'm going to come over there and show you what else we're using. Okay, so to power everything, or to actually, you know, create the load, we have these wires going to our 3000 watt inverter here. That is plugged into these heat guns. That's what we use for our primary load. So, um, other than that, there's nothing more really to it. So, let's get started. Okay, so to be clear about how we're doing this, I have my power wire here running straight to the inverter, and I have my, I have this as 4O gauge, my ground, is actually going to the piece of the shunt that connects to the box before you get to the screen. Um, so before we actually do the test today, I'm going to be doing a 130 amp test for 30 seconds on these cells. That's what I want to figure out. So I'm going to go into the app, and I'm going to screen record this so I can show that on the video as well. So once I'm in the app, I want to go to data clearing and I want to clear all the accumulated data. That way we have a fresh timer. I'm going to go into the curve and make sure that I turn the history on. Uh, I'm going to come back here and once again, I'm going to go ahead and hit this data clearing. And then actually I'm going to top these cells off, give them a little bit more of a charge. Make sure that the cells are okay. They look pretty topped up. It shot right to 14.3. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this off. Now I'm going to hit data clearing one more time. That way we're just fresh data and we have it started here. And then I'm going to go ahead and turn the inverter on. I already have my hot air gun set to produce about 130 amp load and let it run for 30 seconds. So started at a runtime of 15. Okay, now that it ran for 30 seconds, what I want to do is I'm going to go to the curve section and I, um, I turn the history off and on just so it's displayed there. I've noticed sometimes it won't export correctly, but then I go to custom export. I just select the entire hour. That way it'll select everything that we've run so far. And then I send it to myself in Messenger. Okay, once I've done that, I can go ahead and close out of the app. And I'm going to stop recording here and I will pick up on the what we do with this data. Okay, 
So after I've exported the data, I have saved it to my PC here, and I've opened it up in Microsoft Excel. The first thing I'm going to do is delete this top line. Um, next, I'm going to highlight uh, the B column, and I'm going to you hit Control and then F to enter the find and replace, and I'm going to replace all of the V here with nothing at all. So I click Replace All. Now, it does take away the voltage from the, the top there, so I have to re-put in the, the V here. So now I, it's back to voltage. Then I highlight column C. I hit Control F, and I take out the A symbol. Replace all. Okay, now another thing I'm going to do here, Control F one more time, replace, and I'm going to replace the negative sign with nothing at all. Since we're only going one way, we can just have it track as current drawn here. Um, and that sets us, that sets up the data that is required for the next steps where we actually begin to build our graph. Next, um, here in this first column, we have a couple of zero data entries. That's pretty common. So I want to take those out so we don't, we're not actually graphing zeros for no reason. So. Next, highlight all three columns. You can hold shift while you select over to make sure that they all get selected. I go to insert, and then I wanna to go to um, recommended charts. I'm going to come in here, I'm going to go to all charts. We want a line chart, and we're gonna pick this very first chart here. So it's, it's not looking too great right now, but the next steps are to actually modify this chart. So the first thing we want to do is we want to come in and we want to click on this line. And we don't want to hit delete, but we want to go to this paint bucket. And we want to go to no line. So after that, we can click off of it. And now we won't have that line going across the bottom. Next, we want to come select this voltage line here. And then we want to go over here and select secondary axis. That will give us our voltage along the, the right side of the screen here with our current along the left side of the screen. Next, what we want to do is we want to click anywhere on the chart, click on the plus, and under axis, we want to use this arrow and go to more options. This should take us to the horizontal category axis under these axis options. We want to click here where it says axis options and then labels, specify interval unit. Um, we want to make this easier to read. So we're going to give it 10 second intervals across the bottom. That'll clean up some of those numbers. And now you see we only have intervals of every 10 seconds going across the bottom here. After that, I recommend clicking on the chart going up here to chart design, and I like inverting the colors. That way it just pops a little bit more. Um, we can click on chart title and choose a title for it. And then to, if we wanted to really bring in the, the data options, um, we can go to, under series options over here, the vertical value axis. We can go here and then under axis options. We can choose the minimum voltage, or sorry, the minimum amperage, because this is the primary, and the maximum. So 0 to 140, that's good because we're pulling at about 130, so we don't want it to be clear up at the top. Um, same thing if we go to the secondary vertical value axis. Here's the voltage. So since we don't ever drop below 11.5 volts. We can set this for 11.5 and the maximum it looks like that we ever have is it starts off at a little bit below 14 so we can set our maximum at 14 volts. No, no, it looks like it might have been a little bit higher so we'll go maximum 14.2. Now once you have all of the setup I recommend um, right clicking here and choosing save as template. Um, it's important to do this before the next steps or else you're going to be importing data into your charts. So um, save your template that way you can easily load up this data in the future. And then what I do is I kind of, I click on this and I will insert a data label here. This is for the voltage. Um, you know, and I'll grab random spots throughout, add data label, 
and I'll add a few data labels along the voltage line. Um, I'll try to get one right at the lowest point as well. And then I'll select one of them and all of them should be highlighted at this point. So then I go over here, label options, I can choose to have them all appear below. That way it makes it easier to read, the numbers will appear below this line. We can go to text options here, and text fill if we wanted to make it a different color. So now I do the same thing with the current line. I'm right here is zero, so I don't need labels there, but then over here, and I definitely want to give it a data label anywhere there's deviation, that way we have the new label clearly marked. Um, same thing here though, I will go right here, label options, and choose I'll probably choose above on this one. That way the, the draw is above it. Text options. Choose the color. And there we go. Now I would just right click anywhere on this image and choose to save this picture. And then you can export it. So other than that, you can play with some of the formatting of the lines, but that's really beyond the scope of this video. I just wanted to give a rundown of how you can get easily the data from the Bluetooth shunt into a readable graph that you can show the performance curve of the battery you're testing. And so finally this is what we are left with. Once it's exported um, you will see you just have the image of exactly the test. So you can see up here it's around 14 volts. Once we turn on the 130 amp load the voltage of the cell drops pretty quickly to about 12.4, then 12.14, and by the end of the test, it's sitting right at about 12.3 when we turn it off, and which, where it quickly rebounds to 13. So you'll get used to how to read these pretty quickly if you've done a couple of these tests to know what you're looking for, and if you have any questions, don't hesitate to drop a comment below and let me know what your question is, and I will try to address it. All right, thanks everyone.